This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Stick around to hear more about the discount they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. Okay, today I want to talk about behavioral psychology, evolutionary theory, and aliens. Either that or some sort of robotic extraterrestrial human imitation that instilled a deep-seated and biologically ingrained fear in our minds. Now, to be clear, this is not a completely serious video. While the topics are, for the most part, scientifically true, or at least we think they're scientifically true, the science is split on that, but more on that later, I want to tackle this from a light-hearted conspiratorial perspective. That is to say, I want to outline certain concepts and then ask a few what-if questions, because they're interesting, and I think it will be fun. All that said, and without further ado, let's get started. What is the Uncanny Valley? Simply put, the Uncanny Valley is a repulsion towards near-human imitation. To explain this best, we need a graph. This is an x-y axis, with x being human likeness and y being familiarity. As we increase the likeness to humans in an inanimate object, for a while, the familiarity also rises. For example, a stuffed animal is more human-like than a glass of water, and thus, as the likeness to humans increases, so too does the familiarity. When studied, it has been found that as an object is made to look more human, its familiarity grows and the positive emotional response to it also increases. As another example, a cute little robot named Cosmo, who has been given a rudimentary face, is far more likable and elicits a far more robust emotional response than a regular forklift. This pattern of human likeness equating to a more positive familiarity and emotional likability response remains true for quite some time, but eventually, the further we advance towards actual human likeness, something happens. What happens is called the uncanny valley. As you get closer and closer to an actual human likeness, the familiarity and emotional response just craters unexpectedly. Just before the threshold of legitimate human features, that is, an indistinguishable human likeness, our emotional response drops like an absolute rock. What you're seeing in the background right now is Amica, or Amica. Amica is a human-like robot who went viral online in 2021 after a video of it waking up began to be shared on social media. Amica has human-like features, especially facial features, and was very clearly designed to be as close to a human likeness as possible, right down to the expressions and imitation of facial muscles. For some, it's an impressive demonstration of robotic technology, but for others, it's absolutely repulsive. You see, Amica is right in the middle of what we call the uncanny valley, because it is made to resemble humans very closely, but still is far from perfect. When faced with robotic or synthetic human likeness, our brains feel a sense of unease, even downright revulsion, when that likeness is nearly perfect, but not quite there. However, when you move just a few degrees away from that level in either direction, robots, cartoons, and other human imitations are often regarded as cute or very appealing. The uncanny valley refers to a sudden, severe, and unexplainable drop in human trust, emotional reception, and familiarity when something looks almost like us, but not really. This is also highly exacerbated, and I mean extremely so, when there is movement involved, meaning that nearly, basically, accurate robotic imitations of human beings as opposed to an image or painting are even more repulsive. Time for the sponsor. New year, new deal from Manscaped. This time it's the performance package of 4.0 with tools for every single occasion. Of course, the Lawnmower 4.0, which is cordless, electric, and waterproof with an LED light for precision trims and skin safe technology as well to avoid nicks and cuts. Also, I didn't know this before actually, but there's a travel lock feature where if you tap the front button three times, it will engage or disengage a lock to prevent it from turning on in transit. Good feature. After that, we have extras like the Crop Preserver deodorant, the Crop Reviver toner spray, and the Weed Whacker, which is an all-purpose nose and ear hair trimmer. On top of that, you can enroll in their Peak Hygiene Plan for automatic refills on your favorite products. And if you click the link down below for a limited time right now, when you buy the Performance Package 4.0, you will get not one, but two free gifts, including a shed travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs. The boxers are, genuinely, I mean this, one of my best pairs. Again, link down below in the description using code UPPER at checkout, and you'll get two free gifts with a Performance Package purchase. That's hard to say, Performance Package purchase. Big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the channel. All right, now that we understand what the uncanny valley actually is, we can talk about the possible implications. Behavioral and evolutionary psychology are not rigidly defined, nor are they universally understood. 
For example, in the 17th century, English empiricist John Locke compared the human mind to a blank sheet of white paper, void of all characteristics and knowledge. He did not believe, nor has any respected academic for that matter since then, that the human mind is literally void of all thought. We, of course, have an innate awareness and rudimentary understanding of our own emotions and our own biological necessities for those that aren't disabled. But generally speaking, his belief was that human beings possess no actual species-wide instinctual knowledge at birth. In the 19th century, largely fueled by the research of Charles Darwin, scientists began to explore the dynamics of group generosity, group selection, and kin selection. These theories began to conflict with earlier ideas of the blank slate, also known as tabula rasa theory, but it wasn't until later in the 20th century when William James, driven by the work of Darwin himself, established a functionalist approach to psychology, claiming that human beings had a series of instinctual behaviors that this theory would be somewhat or fully let go. James asserted that such behaviors could be overridden by physical and emotional experience, of course, but that their existence on a wider species level was undeniable. As an example of long-standing evolutionary impulse passed down instinctually through the ages, we can look at sugar. Our intrinsic desire for sugar dates back as far as human history. In the early days of hunting and gathering, sugar represented a large energy boost with very little downside. That energy could mean the difference between life and death because it allowed for further execution of critical tasks. But in a more modern environment, we still have that deep psychological desire for sugar born of a utility in millennia past. The desire for sugar is obviously in part physical, but the psychological component obviously exists even without childhood experience to back it up. This kind of phenomenon indicates that human beings have developed impulses and instinctive responses to outside stimulus that are deeply ingrained on a variety of levels. One such impulse, though it is incredibly hard to study and predict, is the uncanny valley, where human beings are repulsed and uneasy when faced with a near-human synthetic likeness. Now, as with any psychological phenomenon, obviously, there are a number of different theorized explanations. One explanation is that this effect occurs when our brains have trouble categorizing something from one distinctive group to another. In this case, non-human becoming human. The explanation claims that we would have this trouble with any highly recognizable group as it begins the transition. This theory is not borne out in any data that I could personally find, but having seen reference to it on a number of different occasions, I decided to include it. Another possible explanation is that the uncanny valley occurs when we are unsure of whether or not the object can think and feel. When a robot becomes more and more human, we will eventually begin to assume that it might think like we do, and our brains instinctively recoil when we are unable to actually make that unconscious assumption. Again, this theory is not borne out in data that I have been able to find, but it remains plausible when we consider that a robot with complex emotional responses could absolutely be a deeply unsettling thing. The last explanation I could find is that the near-human revulsion is born from an evolutionary desire for safety and reproductive health. This would mean that our ancestors had a psychological desire to avoid things that did not appear to be fully human, because there were complex diseases and deformities that our brains told us should not be passed down to our children. This would seem to be the most plausible explanation, in my personal opinion, but rather than simply assigning the most benign and reasonable explanation to this effect, what if it was something else? What if the instinctual revulsion towards a near-human likeness is a result of necessity? What if, somewhere in human history throughout the ages, an evolutionary imperative was developed where real humans had to differentiate between others of their species and something else? What if there was some sort of thing that existed and replicated our facial features in an imperfect way, and over many thousands of years, we developed a psychological fear of that thing, which persists even now as our technology grows? The Uncanny Valley was first coined by Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori in 1970. To this day, it has been incredibly difficult to study. Many scientists claim it just doesn't even exist, and largely speaking, it is a phenomenon that we are only just now beginning to explore. We don't even know how to predictably elicit the response, and we certainly don't agree on what causes it in the first place, but even with such a basic and unfinished perspective, the Uncanny Valley drastically impacts a variety of subjects in our lives. Disney, for example, takes great care with their animations to avoid the uncanny valley. Since the feelings of revulsion are present across multiple different mediums, including 3D animation, triggering that kind of response can mean the difference between a $500 million payday and a $200 million catastrophe. In video games, as another example, there's a very clear developmental trend which, unbeknownst to most of us, dodges the uncanny valley. 
Video games are very often extremely stylized, relying on an artistic option where it's extremely obvious that characters are not human, or photorealism on the other end of the spectrum, where technology is used, along with a massive budget in most cases, to cross the uncanny valley and make something hyper-realistic. Many people don't even think about this lack of near-human likenesses at all, or its relative impact when they do exist, because much of the world we know today instinctively avoids them. Some fields, like robotics, will inherently grapple with this concept more than others, since the technology for an indistinguishable robotic face just doesn't exist yet. But for the most part, even in a world where scientists don't fully agree on the existence of the effect, we still create content around it. In video games, for example, even if the uncanny valley does not elicit a strong enough repulsion to stop someone from playing entirely, it appears to dramatically decrease empathy. Our brains are so effectively trained at deducing human emotion that when such emotion is portrayed poorly or wrong in our minds, landing in the uncanny valley rather than on either side of it, our appreciation for a video game or a movie can be completely wiped out. As an example, it's rare to see video game characters raise their arms above their heads in certain poses outside of a scripted cutscene, because the simulated flesh and bone structure for these characters does not support shoulder and joint movement perfectly. The effects of this could then push a character from one side of the uncanny valley off the edge and lead to a total loss of empathy and compassion for them. Glitches that break the immersion don't always just break the immersion, sometimes they affect our brains on a much deeper level. At times, they push us into the uncanny valley, and since every single person appears to experience this phenomenon differently on an individual level, with different responses to the same stimulus, we might identify a glitch as immersion breaking consciously, when in reality, subconsciously, it has triggered some sort of primal response that made us repulsed by the character, because they are now close to a human likeness, but not quite there. I have no idea what actually causes this effect to occur, and it's possible we might never know, as is true with many different psychological phenomenons and fields and all sorts of things concerning the brain because it's so complex, but when thinking about the existence of an evolutionary disgust for near-human things, I caught myself wondering if there might have been a prehistoric reason for it. Obviously not the most serious video in the world, but what if there was an extraterrestrial presence on Earth that couldn't quite mimic our appearance properly? What if there was an infiltration of robotic imitations, and humans naturally adapted to be repulsed by them out of a need for reproductive health? But I'm not sure. I don't necessarily believe that it's true, obviously, but it's fun to speculate. Anyways, that's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. I'm trying to get away from YouTube AdSense, which is unpredictable at best, so Patreon and Locals are a great thing to check out if you have any interest at all in supporting the content. There's also Manscaped, another YouTuber to check out, a completely different video platform called Odyssey. All my videos are up on that too, plus merch, social media, etc, etc, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.